Hi guys, Zoom here again. Today on episode 2 of the Tune to 102 series, we're going to be covering the crankshaft, the bearings, and the connecting rods. So, let's start with the crankshaft. One of the first questions you want to ask is, do you have a forged or a cast iron? And the easiest way to identify if you have a forged or a cast would be the wide parting line. Also, there are a few things that can be done to improve the crankshaft. One of the things would be removing any excess material, most people will call that knife edging. And uh, in some cases you can even add in some sharp paint in as well. So there's a few things that can be done. You can chamfer the oil holes, which is essentially you're um, doing a countersink. And what I'll do is that'll improve the oil flow throughout the entire system. You can also observe that this is a forged crank by the wide parting line here. So now we're on to the crankshaft bearings. The selection of these bearings has various characteristics. One of the important things you want to get is uh, fatigue strength, uh, resistance to corrosion, and the embeddability. The embeddability refers to the surface ability to prevent smaller particulates from being embedded. Uh, so if you're in a high horsepower street driven application, uh, bearing with a high strength and corrosion resistance, um, along with a harder material or higher embeddability, are important to ensure longevity but if you were building a you know purpose-built dry gracing application you know corrosion resistance aren't as important as embeddability and conformability are these particular bearings though are from ACL uh, which is a very very popular aftermarket option as they feature a tri coat material which is a combination of uh, lead, tin, and copper. Most would argue gives that perfect blend of conformability and strength. Another popular aftermarket option is Clevite or your factory OEM bearings. So moving right along to the connecting rods. Uh, one of the easiest way again to identify whether you have a forged or casting rod would be the wide parting line. If you observe here, this is a forged rod. Um, you also have some aftermarket options like, you know, billet now, which they're making the rod from one chunk of billet aluminum. Um, I believe they have billet steel as well, as opposed to, you know, just a forging or a casting method. Uh, you would imagine they would be a lot stronger than a forged rod. The forging process, right, the forged rods, they get their name in the process and how they're made, right? Unlike casting, these units are forged using very, very high pressure forge and die. 4340 alloy is the most common aftermarket option and it sparks the age old debate H versus I. This particular model is a H pattern and it refers to the design as you can see here. It's reported to be stronger than the I, and uh, from personal experience, I've found that they, they, they are but at the expense of being a little bit heavier. So if you were building uh, high horsepower, you know, high cylinder pressures, you know, turbo nitrous application, then the H beams are probably the preferred choice. Um, but if you were building, a, you know, a natural aspirated motor that won't be seeing such high cylinder temp or cylinder pressures, an I pattern would probably be a suitable option as well being that it is a little bit lighter. So we're gonna roll forward to the final stage of the connecting rods, which is the rod cap. This is a OEM Honda rod, and most, like, like just about every other manufacturer, they would have a stud made into the connecting rod itself, and then a rod cap, which is secured by a bolt. It's, this works good for our OEM, but if you're gonna to start to build, you know, very, very high cylinder pressures, what you wanted to do is convert to a uh, bolt into rod style where as you can imagine instead of having a stud you have a bolt which is much beefier and how you can have a, a, a better tread pattern and increase the strength dramatically so that's just you know standard here the last thing that I want to touch on would be the wrist pins I know I said I want to do this in the other video but being that I have it here you can see, I don't know if you can see this good, but the wrist pin and the rod are made together and they are rotating together. Whereas on this one now, which is a free floating, the connecting rod are moving, but the wrist pin 
it's stationary and that's part and due by the they're locked in place by a spiral lock here and if you can notice there's a much bigger thick or thicker pin than on this application greatly improving the wrist pin strength and the fact that this is a free floating is going to reduce the friction or parasitic friction dramatically i mean i've seen you know some good horsepower gains just by converting the connecting rods to a free floating style so i'd like to thank everyone for tuning in thus far to the tune to 102 series um, i hope you guys found this video informative um, please feel free to share or like this video at any time <laughs> Talk about the time